Hi there and welcome into this tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to be teaching a little bit about how to debug and understand the behavior tree of your non-playable characters that you have placed inside your game. So that's both for perception to understand a little bit more about how you can toggle and understand these parameters inside your game and also to visualize it a little bit uh, in an easier way so that you can both fix mistakes and to see the right values for things like let's say a uh, perception system and things like that. In order to show you how you can debug your behavior tree, I'm going to be using this character that I have already created. It's a basic enemy that has some behavior, so that's a little bit easier for me to display it to you. I have also this knife mesh over here. As you can see, it's not big because I'm going to be showing a few things and that's why I have made it just that small. So, if you don't know, you can just place a nav mesh just by going over here, then select a nav mesh, nav bounds volume, and then just place it like that and increase it as much as you want, just like that. And uh, here I have this behavioral tree that is for this uh, basic enemy. That's what basically going to do is that he has a patrolling system where he's going to be searching for our character. If he sees our character, then he's going to start chasing our character and if he gets closer enough to our character then the combat is going to be activated. One thing that's very important to notice is that even though we are used to be calling AI for things related to behavior tree in Unreal Engine, uh, this is not, not actually AI, it's just a set of parameters that could be triggering different events and that is to simulate AI, but it's not AI as we are used to know nowadays. Uh, so this is just a set of parameters that could be triggered and to, could be triggering specific events. But to, be, to debug this behavioral tree, there are a few options. The first one, the most common one, that's just like would be in any other kind of blueprint in Unreal Engine, that is to place a stop node. So let's say in this sequence over here, I could just place a stop node like that. And by doing that, I would be able to see if it gets into this sequence. So let's go into our game and I'm going to start playing. And as you can see, by default, he went through here. Uh, and by doing that, I'm able to see that he went through this node. But since this is behavioral tree, there are a lot more options that I could be using. Uh, I'm going to be showing that now. So if I go into our game with this uh, enemy over here and I press the apostrophe key, I'm going to be seeing a few options. Uh, there are on the left uh, up corner, you're going to see that has by default is going to be shown the behavior tree, AI, and there are a lot a few options there as well. If you are not able to toggle that, those options, that's mainly because by default in Unreal Engine, those options should be uh, pressed using the numpad on your keyboard, but there, are, there is a lot of keyboards that doesn't have any numpad, uh, just like the one that I'm using right now. If you are using a keyboard that doesn't have any numpad, I'm going to be showing you first how you can change these uh, inputs in your simulation. So let's go into file, I actually uh, edit it, project settings, then here in engine, let's search for gameplay debugger, this one over here. As you can see, I have changed that already, but if you have not, uh, it's going to be seeing something like, let's say, num 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, just like this one. So, uh, to change that, just press over here and then change 1, 2, and that goes to the inputs that you want to be using for that. Uh, that way you can differentiate between the numpad and the actually numbers in your keyboard. So just do that and save it and you should be good. Now here I'm going to be showing those options. So right now uh, the first thing as I tell a lot of information I'm going to be showing by, by parts. So the first one AI I'm going to be showing the behavioral tool that's going to be running uh, on the uh, selected character. If I press the number 2, I'm going to be seeing the tasks that are being running. So right now it's checking the distance and it's also running toward our character. So those are different things that are running, that are being running right now. 
as you can see right now, I am outside and I've mashed that uh, why there he is, he is, he is my book. That's because he's, he is able to see our character but not able to go to run towards our character. So by doing simple that, I would be able to notice that there is a problem the nav mesh is not big enough. Uh, the next thing that I want to be showing you is that we are able, let's just toggle back 1 and 2 and let me show the perception. So as you can see, the perception right now uh, is basically the perception of our character right now, he has sight on the side. So as you can see, he's detecting our character and I'm also able to see a little bit more of information. The first one is that I'm able to see the distance of his perception. So let's say if I go outside his perception range, he's going to stop seeing our character. That's, by doing that, we're able to toggle to uh, set the right default at the right distance with the perception of your character, your non-playable character. So let's say you are creating a stealth game, things like that, where your perception is something important, then you can use that to define what would be the right distance for you. And let's say if you are trying to get the right distance without using this kind of tools, you would be seeing something like that. And it would be a little bit harder to notice the total distance of your character. So that's why it's always useful to use these debug tools. Not only for debugging, but to notice how your system is working. If I press uh, number 6, I'm going to see a little bit more information. But this is the main information that I want. Uh, other thing is that I'm able to see the angle of his vision. So right now it is 90 yeah. degrees. That's why it's on the mid over there. Uh, there is another task where he should check uh, close to our last saving location. That's why he's not losing uh, me from sight because he's turning around. Now he lost me on sight. And since I'm still inside his range of perception, but since I am outside uh, his angle of perception, he's still not able to see me. If I go back inside again, I'm able to see that once more. There are. A few more things that we need to know about behavior tree. The first being that, let's say, if you're dealing with multiple characters, so let's say instead of one, you have two of those over here. So just copy and paste it like that. And if I go into our game, I'm going to be seeing the perception, the behavior of only one of those characters, but I can just be talking between them and yeah, one second, just be talking between them, and I would be seeing the other behavior too. So that's very useful information because, let's say, if you have different uh, non player characters with different behavior tree and want to see that information, that would be something that you need to take in consideration. Another thing that is very good to, for you guys to know is that you could also drag this behavior tree uh, like that, or have in a different monitor, things like that. And if I go into our game, I'm able to see the entire behavioral tree. So as you can see the tasks that I being run. That is useful for debugging as well to understand how your behavior tree is working. Because right now I'm able to see where he is getting stuck. And if I get close again, I'm able to see the difference, the changes. And that's also useful information. So that's basically what I want to show you, how you can debug and understand a bit more about your behavior tree, how it's behaving in your game. So thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Visit train.memetinteract.com and enroll into this course to get all source files. Use coupon code MEMETY to enroll for free.